got some some words behind the scenes from Puppy <laughs> during that last draft. They are afraid of your monkey, Remco. Feel the power. He remembers last game. But don't worry. New game. Oh, there we go. There, Puppy trying to sort of build spirits coming into this game three. As they, they need everything here, secret to they try be able to turn things around against Tundra. Two games now where there's just been a point where it seems all over. Tundra has just been all over secret, closing up the games as they wish. Here, this game three, indeed, as we talked about during the draft, a bit of a different approach from both teams. Much and, different. Yeah, Tundra absolutely trying something completely different there. You know, obviously, Aoi mentioning that you know, cosmetics were a bit of an influence in terms of why Skeeter's running the Medusa in this match. But regardless, you've got to imagine they still pick it because they feel that it's going to have its strengths here. Something that other teams have not been able to find in any of the games so far here, this international. Yeah, they probably feel like it can get to the scaling point, but the laning phase could be incredibly difficult. This is a very oppressive lane that Secret does have down here. And Mirana, I mean, we've seen Snaking do fantastic work on it, but sometimes, sometimes you just can't really protect these cores. There's a reason these like, Medusas and Clinks have not been picked too often. Their lanes can just get completely shut down. So let's see if Skeeter and Snaking are able to do it. Right away, we're seeing those immediate tangos. Four or five of them are even passed off to Skeeter. He's going to have to bring more down because of the harassment that's coming out. Of course, one thing that's going to be feeling good for Secret. We're seeing already some action from it here. Down bottom, Zayat's getting his hands on the Marcy this game. One of the stronger heroes from the tournament. They don't have the one of those heroes that really benefits the most off of the sidekick, though. Usually you do see, like, when Tundra does try to offer it, they have, like, two or three heroes they can throw this sidekick onto. Not really many on Secret, where it's like, wow, amazing sidekick. Like, sure, the damage bonus on an Ember can be decent, but Naga Siren getting sidekicked up isn't really the best. So it's going to be more of just this ganking in Marcy in particular. And do you feel a bit more comfortable overall with Secret's uh, approach? You know, this game, Crystalis, playing what you could only describe sort of as a more traditional carry, right? It's not this Pudge or Bristol that's going to look to be forced to get involved at a, an earlier time. He can look to sort of take the game a bit more on his shoulders as a, as a harder carry as the Naga Siren in this game three. Yeah, I mean, eventually, like, he should be able to he, and eventually definitely take over the map, and they do have those elements to be able to push and abuse those side lanes. It's very, like, like 702 are saying, it's like the, the script has shifted completely. It almost looks like a Tundra draft on the secret side, except with the Silencer. So it could definitely see Crystalis perhaps get to that point, but let's see if he's able to with the pressure that comes out, because Tundra set super oppressive. But looks like Skeeter, he's having a little bit of a rougher one, as we've seen. Snaking actually getting a lot of last hits in this lane. Six, because Skeeter's being pushed off a lot from the aggressiveness. I mean, that's, you know, sort of something to be said there, at least Snaking making sure that not too much is getting missed from the both of them. Yeah. We'll see top puppy. Just gonna look to chase out Satcher a little bit. So this will be fine and into the trees. I mean, mid lane, this time round, having the Ember Spirit here for, for, for Nisha. I mean, what's sort of your thoughts on this hero? I mean, Cool. Later on in the draft, is this a game where Ember Spirit is going to have the luxury of sort of dancing around the team fights, or is there a few concerns for Nisha? Definitely some limited disables on the side of Tundra. He could he could have a spectacular game. However, Ember at this tournament has been having some difficulties, of course, kind of committing into fights. You kind of just run out of steam at some point, it feels like, on this hero lately. So we'll see what he's going to be able to make of it. Top. Saksa. Trying to trade with Puppy, but Chrysalis will step up, make sure the Saksa can't continue to stand his ground against the Silencer. Now we see the build, of course, from 33. It's Axe Max, but also just he started with the Sage's Mask straight into the Bass. He's starting some mangoes. It's a typical approach from, from Tundra and just keeping the spam on. He sees top CS. And sort of a secret, you know, in terms of, obviously, we talked about how Tundra can deal with the mid secret. You know, for secret, how well are they going to be able to deal with Nine when he hits this point where he's coming in with those early rotations, heading to the side lane of the Rolling Thunder? Can they deal with the Pango's aggression? He could be a big problem. So I think we have to watch for these globals if he's able to catch it, like in between these rolls and stuff like that, how much Puppy's going to be able to do to catch this with the combination of Nisha. They do have burst damage to be able to just kill this Pango in some situations, so. Well, so far in the mid, Nisha. Decent bit of a lead here, 29 to 5 against the 21 and 2. Doing his best with a consistent slight spam here onto 9, keeping him low. Both kind of doing the same thing to each other, keeping each other 
just at gankable levels, and it's a bit scarier, I would say, for the Pango. He actually has to go back to base because there's a Marcy. So whenever you're getting put low, you always have to expect this rotation to come in. So we do see Nine is forced back to base. And we did see Zaj yeah, indeed step over to yeah. the area, see if that opportunity was going to be had. Zai Nine plays it smart. As soon as he goes missing bottom, even for a couple seconds, they do have to be very wary of it. Thinking. He's got the trade. He's got two in Starstorm, too. It's true. Science does get too low. Dude, Snaking will look to jump in and burst through him. Yeah, one or two more hits, and he would have probably been able to go for it. And looking at the bottom lane, he also was a bit of a slower start in the first few waves. Looks like Skeeter is able to pr pretty much catch back up here to him the amount of fun. Rezo's getting out of this 26 for 7, 23 for 6, and he's got this full wave coming in against him. I think Skeeter, you know, despite the early pressure on him, Dealt very well with those first few waves, those first few lanes that they've had to match up against Secret down here. They've been Dyer's so good because of this Mirana, really. Like Snaking's attack. actually been able to Brett bully and make sure that Skeeter's able to have a decent laning phase because these two points in Star Storm is able to trade with pretty much anybody. And here we see this rotation coming in. He's already used this watch bundle. Six. And he has indeed hit the six. And Alamine nine, and he's more than fine. In fact, trying to use that ult to set up a bit onto Nisha, but the remnants oh. are the ready. Nisha himself in the six. Nine's ever roll across, pick up that arcane rune. Has Snaking and Saxa heading over to help. They're jumping with the rebound, and Zayats goes down. They'll even be able to turn over towards Nisha as well. But He's Nine fighting. will die for that effort. Maybe feeling a bit stronger than he was there, charging forward with the backup of his two supports. But Nine ending up losing his life off the back of that aggressive play. Nine, Nisha does incredible physical damage right now. The corrosion and the blades of attack finished. So much damage, yeah. With Maybe three was... points in slide. Yeah, maybe thought he was going to be a little bit tankier, and immediately they rotate in Zayas, they fill up the bottle, so looking to play around Nisha as much as possible. So yeah, Secret showing that they can bring their supports mid as well. Sure that Nisha continues to have that edge in this mid matchup. Only about a 600 gold difference, a lead here for the Amber Spirit. Nisha playing it well so far. I mean, that, that, that tends to be in the decision there, so Secret, they're going to be like, okay, no longer can we really pressure the Deuce early game, we're just going to look to buff up this Amber Spirit so he can be the one to kind of take over the map. Since Naga's now having her own free time, they're just going to be like, all right, Rezo, you're sacked for the moment. We'll deal with this Medusa later on. Still keeping the silencer even around the mid lane. Thirty-three. Looks like he'll give some of that top lane to Saxa. Thirty-three will start to clear a bit of the stacks. Prepared here in the triangle. Yep, he's got his helm creep finished up too, so now he can look to actually pressure the lane. Once he's got this creep, he can go back up there. Bottom lane, making a bit of an effort onto Skeeter. Man, they're starting to get pretty low here. The arrow. Damage resides in resolution, snaking on target. That holds back Rezo. Limits the ability for Secret to continue to chase down Skeeter, but I'm seeing heavy pressure now from these two, and it's going to become even more secret. They're bringing in Nisha to make the aggressive play down. Eskida immediately out of the area, does not want to mess around when these sort of rotations come out from the mid. The earlier ward that's making placed for the to watch the rotations of the Marcy, actually this time catches the Ember Spirit, making the rotation down. So Skeeter, we've seen him actually last game did the same thing, got pushed out of lane relatively early. We'll go to jungle, and right. Snaking's going to send the trees and sap. And is this timing again, really? So this eight to nine minute window, where both games secret. They have been allowed to, to get this early tier one tower. So once again, I get some good pressure on at the moment, snaking. Same position here in the last game. Sapping the XP that he can. Over in uh, Super Top of the, the map, though. Sax has got a bit of a catch on to Crystalis. He looks dead. No, he's ready to jump in with the Rolling Thunder. That's Crystalis caught. So while Secret put the pressure on down bottom, Tundra make the most of that information to catch out Crystalis alone. It's so much pressure. As soon as the Dominator's finished up on the Beastmaster, he's shoving the lane in. They're looking to catch behind, and yeah, Soxa, he finds it. He's now going to take away some of this jungle, take away the bounty rune as well. And look at Snaking. It looks like he's potentially maybe trying to drag a wave or something. Yeah, maybe try to grab that, but unable to because he's getting chased. Does mean that they're not going to get the bottom tower on the side of Secret, and top tower is going to drop to the side of Tundra. And Snaking, it's just space making. Ooh, oh, unless Rezo reads him. Nicely done there from Rezo. Zayat's able to jump in and throw Snaking back into the clutches of Resolution. They'll get themselves a kill out of that Secret. Oh, beautiful play from Rezo. I've seen Isha. He's diving in sort of pretty deep into Tundra's half of the map. Trying to really keep Skeeter on his toes, make sure this Medusa doesn't feel too safe to farm. Even this sort of deep area on their half. He's not really at risk of too much. Like, they have to bring so many heroes to kind of punish this Ember Spirit. So I really like the play from Nisha. He's just keeping this Medusa low, keeping him scared. Because if a plus one hero comes in, it's a free kill every time. And now, with this, potentially able to take this bottom tower point, put it to Edict. So we'll be able to match that move from Tundra up top. 
two to yeah. two. Ten minutes in. Similar to sort of the close start that we were getting, at least out of the game two of all this. This grand finals. Radiance Secret very much having their own strengths. Fallen. Overall though, see top of the board there, 33. He's making a making the money on this Beastmaster. We've seen this from him a lot on his Beastmaster, especially being top net worth when it was when it was very popular he was playing it so much. And we'll see now if there's going to be a play from Secret to look to invade the Ancient area, because that's kind of like the Medusa specialty, is farming these Ancients. In the past, most games with Tundra, they actually don't do this for Skeeter, because he's usually playing with these Illusion heroes, so... Let's see if they are going to look to punish him. And sort of in comparison to the drafts that we have from Tundra in Game 1 and Game 2, would you sort of consider this, this Game 3-1 a little bit more vulnerable in these sort of early stages like secret have a bit more of a chance of shutting them down early yeah absolutely medusa just takes it takes some time before she wants to show up at all so it does feel like they can look to be playing pretty aggressive just have to really avoid nine in particular i mean he's the big playmaker if they can kind of Nisha. move away from the pangolier let's see if he seizes the opportunity to go for saxa entry down though for saxa now he knows that he's just watching him tough grab though and nine is still I mean, Really lingering in the back line. On he still the wants to maybe do something. He's got so, quite the flank. It's a bit low on the mana as well. Went up too much to throw out here. There's the opening for nine. Him the Rolling Thunder. They'll pop the global. The creep takes the arrow. Stun. And he won't quite connect. And now Rezo tries to turn. But the global comes to an end. Saxa turns for the combo. Avalanche just to take him down. Resolution falls. But Zayas is fighting. The backup of Nisha. Secret. They'll be able to take something in return. Oh, no way. He's able to swipe when he goes for the TP. But Nisha will be able to dive in with the remnant. Pick up a couple, maybe more. Chains are up. He has enough mana to stop the TP from Saxa. Puppies here as well. They'll chase out the tiny. Surround him in the trees. It's a triple kill for Nisha. What a play. Skills up the, the Searing Chains after he gets the kills. Immediately has enough mana to do it too. Beautifully done. This is exactly what Secret need to be seeing from Nisha. They have to have him just step up to the next level. Something that he has done before in some of the series here during the playoffs of and, TI. They and, need Nisha to be on top form and have a chance tower, against Tundra. And you see why they put so much emphasis on him in the mid lane, fill up his bottle, do everything you can to make sure Nisha has this game so he can make that space for this Naga Siren. Now, yeah, Crystal is free in the jungle and they have a regen rune sitting bottom. So Zayat, he's camping it for Nisha so he can keep his impact on the map. All about this Amber Spirit for Secret. Skeeter, feeling confident enough to step up in the mid. Secret, they'll That's definitely scary place. jump on this. They'll get him with the opening. They've taken out his mana. The damage has been done. A Whoa. risky position for Skeeter to, to find himself in. Secret, they, they don't hold back at all at making that jump. They know that that Medusa is in a completely dangerous spot. And it hurts. That's Skeeter out of the game for 20 seconds. Secret, they managed to put some pressure on the mid. And of course, this is just continued gold and XP being fueled and funneled into this Ember Spirit. Still has the regen running, so he's full HP, full mana for this push. They can still have to fight if anyone does come in. And Tundra doesn't feel like they do want to fight here. It's dropping too fast. Big moves. I love Secret. This one go. And tons of space. Crystal is now able to rotate down toward bottom. Nine. He's sort of keeping his eyes on Chrysalis, but of course, in this area, out on his own. He's not able to sort of make any sort of move or aggressive play. At least not until he has the Diffusal Blade done. When that's there, he might be able to look for some solo action. I was looking to see if we would see that build uh, queued up also for Crystalis, because I believe Notel was mentioning, I think it was... I think it was Hector who did it, actually, in one of the games as Naga when he was playing. And he went with the Fusal Blade, and it was very strong. So if he can, opt to do that, if I they think, even want I to. Well, I think the thing is, though, to. do they even want to, though? Because, like, the Medusa, maybe they don't feel like they even need it. I mean, how little this hero's been playing. You might sort of see the argument for just getting that Scarlet as soon as you can. Of course, yeah. is going to have incredible benefits from limiting the Medusa in these fights. Secret, this time around, really finding their footing. Now for Tundra, playing around 33 is probably the best option. Helm of Overlord is finished, so it is a, a big problem for Secret. Resolution's pretty vulnerable as 33 opens up with a raw easy kill there for Tundra. That's the big hero that they do have to watch out for. And yeah, snaking with these Moonlight Shadows, this has kind of been one of the biggest things that Tundra's been able to play around. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the Samba Spirit next fight. He's got his Maelstrom done and a DD in the bottle. Oh boy. You don't want to fight around this Amber unless you're guaranteed to have the lockdown. And of course, this is a point where Raw has been used. Nisha is gonna be able to play with that timing in mind. Not too much that he has to threat when he turns up these team fights. And there's Global available too, so even if the Chain Stun comes out, like 
Sucks to fight an avalanche. They can pop it. He He's ready to go. It changed. There's Followed by the global silence. See the runner. Snakey try and get off to the side, but the slight's there. They take down both supports. And they might even get the help. They will. Extra 250 gold will be going the way of resolution, so more money for him. I'll speed up the bloodstone. Really is, you know. So should being able to step it up a bit more in game two, but here in this game three, his Ember Spirit so far, so good here with these early plays. And he's sort of on towards the level 12. Once he gets that item done after the Maelstrom, we'll see what it's going to be if he feels he needs to get the BKB, play some sort of sort of into, into some sort of safety for the next item. But at the same time, as we say, we're sort of lack of lockdown. He might not need it. He can just build yeah. up that damage, continue to play aggressive. I think he probably wants to look to play as aggressive as possible. The space for Crystals is amazing right now. He's just having the time of his life on this Naga Siren. 2k lead. And Secret, they're still clustered together. The lanes are all in a good position for them, so they can just keep looking to fight. Even though they don't have global, this is around them in. Another catch here from Nishri. He's in with a slight change. Oh. Bringing up to the side. They get the disposed back on the sacks of a side. So Puppy just gets shredded by 33 and his dinosaur. As they Kaku, still in. They're ready to see if they can catch more snakes. He's in with the arrow. Quick turn the slight change. It's pretty deep here. Now towards the tier two, they'll continue to try and chase him. Chains back up. Well, Nisha is starting to sort of think they're a bit risky. He's going to get caught by the other one. Oh, Nisha goes down. Oh, That's Tundra. Man. They hit back hard. Straight down the mid. They take out four. And now Secret, they're looking for the fight. They're like, we don't have global, but we don't really care. We can still look to get this, but an avalanche from the high ground, I think, catches, what, three heroes? Axes as well from the Beastmaster, catches multiple. Tundra in position perfectly to counteract Secret. Yeah, as we've seen time and time again for Tundra this series, they know when to go. You give them any sort of opening, and they just go straight for it. And both supports take it out, and then they know it's their time. around here on the aggressive against secret puppy does have the global up they have to try to take out this 33 beastmaster beastmaster somehow he's doing way too much damage christos is still getting all the space in the world but that is a pretty devastating hit losing nisha like that absolutely We're going to get to see how Chrysalis have an impact this game that he just hasn't had in the series so far. Sure. Both game one and game two, he just never really got the farm. Pretty much stuffed at the bottom of the cores. It will be a different story this time. So Chrysalis will absolutely feel a bit more powerful when those inevitable team fights occur that he has to turn up to. That being said, also though, Skeeter has started to get ignored a little bit because of the moves Tundra's been able to counteract for Secret. He's got Manta. Now he can freely push out those waves without having to show his face. He can actually survive in most situations. That's so. very true. I mean, Secret's as you said, hard. on the Medusa, you're always going to have a tougher time opening up in this sort of game. And Skeeter, arguably, he's got through that tough spot. He got through one of the tougher ones. And he's always going to have excellent Ma Mystic Snake targets. You just throw that onto the flesh in most situations. You get so much mana back in the fights. Secret have to be careful in these next few moments. Can't make another mistake like that. We gotta smoke up. Nisha's still having quite a bit of gold in the bank. 2,600. See snaking poke at the wave mid, but Dyer's they want something down. much bigger He's than that. They want attack. 33's life. This is the best kill Let's they can find right now. See if they can blow him up here with a combo. Straight in, but already 33's on the side. They find the chain. Sox is here. Help out. Rolls back up. They turn with the roar onto resolution, holding back the less track. They'll turn his attention over towards Saxer instead. Here comes Peter. They want to look to try and take this by nine. Rolls up straight up the high ground. He's got the opening stone on the resolution. The roll continues and pulls through the song as resolution's taken. Out. They're still chasing. Nine, he's ready to close it on Chrysalis as the song comes to an end. Illusion's back out for Chrysalis, snaking. Jumps over the Star Storm, trying to burst secret down low. The curse kicks in on to nine, so no further spells available to be casted on the chase. But now Roche. resolution has gone. 33 as strong as ever, steps over into the Roshan pit. They were so close to maybe catching 33 by surprise, but they couldn't quite find the initiation off the back of the rebound. They waited. Oh. So they're trying to poker them here, secret. Sort of deter Tundra from committing to the Roshan, but it's, it's rough. They waited a little too long, it felt like on the global. Every spell got casted, and then global comes out. The roar and the avalanche was already there to kind of let the, let 33 get the distance. So, secret again, they have to be careful with these mistakes. 
It's gonna get punished every single time. Tundra is all at the ready to look for Ooh. these fights, and now with Skeeter at the ready to fight, they're gonna look for their own battle oh, with four or five. Skeeter's ready to join, and he's got a point in the stone gaze as well. So ready to pop that ultimate. Stop secret from being able to Sox. sort of take the fight head into the. Sox has got Blake. He's in with a jump. He gets the toss back. They'll get the quick pick onto Puppy. Puppy gets burst through. Rebound for Zion. So to watch Saxa. The stone gaze has been popped here. So secret. They can't come in for now. Ooh. Rezo's actually going to end up tanking the roll out the back of one of the illusions. Rezo's going to attempt to run down Tundra with this in mind. But off to the back lines. Nine. Straight in. On top of Zion. Controlling the boss. He good bounces here. Off the cliffs. Leave Zion. No option to escape. Nine. Takes him out, pretty much solo, jumps over the swipe buckle, stun will connect though, no, nine, he's falling low, Nisha has the damage, they taste down nine. Can they chase for more? But the curse on the 33, Rezo, Watch the bloodstone, getting that mana back up, he's ready to chase, he's close to the ammo to the beast fast, it's going to be another for secret, triple kill Big for Nisha. Only Skeeter and Saxa left here for Tundra, Saxa, he still wants to fight, jumps in with the top, the avalanche under the three of them, they've taken out resolution, there's going to be a buyback from Zyas, Secret, they're putting everything into holding this fight, keeping Crystalis safe, Nisha, the dragon. he's so low on mana, he hasn't really got much, but obviously he's trapped up on the high ground, he's got one more slide of he's fish, he's burning, but Skeeter, he's, he's burning, off the boot for the dragon, 33, kills him off, Skeeter will, will surely die here, can they really get him out? Oh, but they're, they're, they're going to get him out. Is he really going to get, get away? They can't close the gap. Skeeter's oh going to live. God. He's going to live. Oh, Nisha, he gets stuck in that little spot on and the, the ledge. And the, the dragon, the bird, he feels it there. And the whole fight, too. A fight that lasts, I mean, what feels like almost two minutes. The Hawk is scouting everything in all these situations, too. Tundra. Amazing at the way that they can reset from these fights. But Seeker, they do get some big kills. Um, yeah, more. No, sure. Nisha dying at the end of it. I mean, look at his case. 10 2 and 2. He's still doing everything he can here to hold on to this game against Tundra. But He's in these fights, Tundra is still able to take to the, to sort of the next level once again in this game three. I mean, look at the start, too. The arrow does connect on the noggin. They're almost able to get the roar, but 33 unable to get it. It's the start there. I mean, crazy chases. I mean, Skeeter being able to walk away as he did. I mean, definitely going to feel frustrating there for Secret. I mean, the way that they're able, just the reset, the constant reset and jump forward, the way they play around these cooldowns. Soxa, how many avalanche toss combos was he able to get in this one? How many axes did you see thrown out? We'll see Skeeter about 2,300 gold away from the Scardi. If they couldn't kill him easily enough then, once he's got his next item done, he's going to be such a huge terror in these team fights. Crystalis too, though. Still getting big. The Orchid is finished, so he also has a level of control, perhaps, a tundra. to catch this Pango. They're ready to make the move. They know Roshan's up. They don't want to head straight into the pit. They want to try and get a pick off first. Secret relatively prepared, though. The fourth and group two. Skeeter, arguably he's got through that tough spot. He got through one of the tougher ones, and he's always going to have excellent Mystic Snake targets. You just throw that onto the flash in most situations. You get so much mana back in the fights. Secret, have to be careful in these next few moments. Can't make another mistake like that. We gotta smoke up. Nisha still having quite a bit of gold in the bank. 2,600. See snaking poke of the wave mid, but Dyer's they want something much bigger than that. They want 33's life. This is the best kill they can find right now. See if they can find they can right up here with the combo. Straight in, but already 33's on the side. They find the chain. Sox is here. Help out. Rolls back up. They turn with the roar onto Resolution, holding back the less track. They'll turn his attention over towards Saxer instead. Here comes Peter. They want to look to try and take this fight. Nine rolls up straight up the high ground. He's got the opening stone. Onto Resolution. The roll can 
continues, of course, through the song as Resolution's taken out. They're still chasing. Tonight, he's ready to close it on Chrysalis as the song comes to an end. Illusion's back out for Chrysalis, Snakey. John Troll with the Star Storm, trying to burst secret down low. The curse kicks in on to nine, so no further spells available to be casted on the chase. But now Roche. Resolution's gone. 33 as strong as ever, steps over into the Rose Champagne. They were so close to maybe catching 33 by surprise, but they couldn't quite find the initiation off the back of the rebound. They waited. So they're trying to poke at them here, Secret. Sort of deter Tundra from committing to the Roshan, but they, it's, it's rough. They waited a little too long, it felt like on the Global. Every spell got casted, and then Global comes out. The Roar and the Avalanche was already there to kind of let the, let 33 get the distance. So, Secret, again, they have to be careful with these mistakes. It's gonna get punished every single time. Tundra is all at the ready to look for these Ooh. fights. And now, with Skeeter at the ready to fight, they're gonna look for their own battle oh, at four or five. Skeeter's ready to join, and he's got a point in the Stone Gaze as well. So ready to pop that ultimate. Stop Secret from being able to sort of take the fight head into the Sox has got blink. He's in with a jump. He gets the toss back. They'll get the quick pick onto Puppy. Puppy gets burst through. Rebounded from Zion. So towards Saxa. The Stone Gaze has been popped here. So Secret, they can't come in for now. Ooh. Rezo's gonna end up tanking the roll out the back of one of the illusions. Rezo's gonna attempt to run down Tundra with this in mind. But off to the back lines. Nine. Straight in. On top of Zion's controlling the bars. He good bounces here. Off the cliffs. Limit Zion's no one to escape. Nine. Takes him out, pretty much solo, jumps over the swipe buckle, stun will connect, though, at nine, he's falling low, Nisha has the damage, they taste down nine. Can they chase for more? They've got the curse on the 33, Rezo, watch the bloodstone, getting that mana back up, he's ready to chase, he's close to the ammo to the beast master, he's gonna be another for secret, triple kill, big kill. Only Skeeter and Saxa left here for Tundra, Saxa, he still wants to fight, jumps in with the top, the avalanche, under the three of them, they've taken out resolution, there's gonna be a buyback from Zyus, Secret, they're putting everything into holding this fight, keeping Crystal is safe, Nisha, the dragon. he's solo on mana, he has a really good point, but he's still trapped up on the high ground, he's got one more slide of he's fish, he's burning, but Skeeter, he's, he's burning, off the bird for the dragon, 33, kills him off, Skeeter will, will surely die here, can they really get him out? Oh, but they're, they're going to get him out. Is he really going to get, get away? They can't close the gap. Skeeter's oh, going to live. God. He's going to live. Oh, Nisha, he gets stuck in that little spot on and the, the ledge. And the dragon, the bird, he feels it there. And the whole fight, too. A fight that lasts, I mean, what feels like almost two minutes. The Hawk is scouting everything in all these situations, too. Tundra. Amazing at the way that they can reset from these fights. But Secret, they do get some big kills. I mean, yeah, more. No, sure. Nisha dying at the end of it. I mean, look at this case, 10-2-2. Two two. He's still doing everything he can here to hold on to this game against Tundra. But He's in got... these fights, Tundra's still able to take to the, to sort of the next level once again in this game three. I mean, look at the start too. The arrow does connect on the Naga. They're almost able to get the roar, but 33 unable to get it. It's the start there. Tundra, they always find him and sort of force Puppy to either not get the global off at all or use it in inopportune moments. You see Cloak of Flames now picked up for Crystalis, so easier ways to cut waves, take it for his illusions as well. See there on the win probability Radiant still. It's very much a strong belief it. there in the power of Tundra. How much farm Skeeter still has and how much farm 33 does. You know, 33 gets to play these fights with his summons alive and sets up with a roar. His impact, it's going to be big in these team fights. Secret holding the high ground. Tundra trying to break back into their own jungle with this they, smoke. They have this ward. They see every. They see at least two or three heroes right now in Secret. It's a difficult area to fight for Tundra, even if they're making the jump off the back of a smoke. They see Puppy with the A on disc too, so maybe gonna look to poke and prod it, force it. Rezo, forcing bottom tower with Edict. Bottom tower is under siege. Almost drops down. And Tundra, Tundra. they obviously just go elsewhere. Yeah, they, they have no interest in defending this tower for now. Yep. Looking to probably finish up the next few items. Skeeter, ha! still not feeling too strong. It's going for the Maelstrom Radiant's build. He's starting to feel perhaps that those that Naga Siren will be an issue. All right. Okay, yeah, going full in on the dealing yeah. with the illusions. And understandably, indeed, with how much farm Crystalis Radiant's has, continuing to, to hold on to that top spot in net worth. Neck and neck game. 
closest of the three. I mean, it really has. We, we've seen sort of the trajectory of the series so far. Game one, Tundra, a complete stop. Game two, Secret very much having much more life to them, but still not enough. Now in this game three, Secret in the best position they've been in today in terms of being able to take a game off Tundra and holding on to their chances here in the grand finals. And in terms of scaling overall with their draft, right? They have the Marcy who's going to be able to scale really hard. Nisha's have this fantastic game. Crystal's is at the top of the net worth. So, and scaling, they should be able to deal with this Medusa as long as she doesn't get too big like a rapier at some point. Eventually, you do feel Tunja's draft can start to fall behind versus what Secret does have this time. Middle tower is under siege. But that's been said a lot of times for Tundra, and Tundra has, has done some miraculous stuff. This is a team that can very much find a win in even the tougher situations later on. One of the reasons they've cruised to this grand final straight through the upper bracket. Tundra, they have so many strategies, so many solutions for every Ooh. single possible position they can be held in. Look at this flank. Shadow, they see the smoke. Oh, Chrysalis. Gonna step up into this, puts the illusion nine. He's gonna look to jump in the battle. The global sign is out, but the rolling thunder's already there. Chrysalis trying to keep them safe here with the song of the siren. Nisha swinging over towards the back lines with the remnants. Chrysalis having to back away from nine over the river. Resolution and Nisha. They'll They're on Chrysalis. To the south, step up. Chrysalis, he needs help. It doesn't look like he's gonna get up. Maybe that disposes there for times. It's not enough. Nisha, see if he can get any sort of a cleanup. Jumps over the remnants. He's trying to chase down Snakey, but secret. They've already lost two. They'll lose sides as well. Tundra. Chase on to Rezo, he's got the BKB, but Skid is in with the sky, he's slow, Rezo goes down as well, four dead on Secret. And Nisha, he's still got Remnant to play with, should be alright. The Root, will it catch him? The Root, got the Roar. Do they have enough? And the Hawks crashing down onto him, it's a little bit more, but not enough, Nisha. Still able to get away. I mean, looking up for him, 33 hadn't quite picked up the Hex. Next time around, the Hex, it will be there. 33's got it done. But they just, I mean, this fight, they just get the perfect wrap run. They stick on Chris, and nobody helps. He gets a global to kind of cover him, but nobody else is able to actually get him into a better position. I mean, it, they full focus him. It, it very much was a case of uh, just biting off a bit more than they could chew. You see, so the plan here from Nisha, he wants to jump to the back lines, try and look for the easier kills. Uh, and then off to the side, sort of this heavy attempt from Secret to, to sort of commit in. And, and try and help out Reza, you know, get this kill on Saxa. All this sort of split focus means that Crystalis, he's got no help at all. No help whatsoever. And they do have enough damage. If they're able to stick on him like that, they will always have enough damage to deal with this Naga Siren. Tundra now 4k lead. Right after we're saying that yep. perhaps they could have some struggle, I they mean, find a beautiful oh, angle. And now, like you said, the Hex is also finished up for 33. So, so for Nisha, he's actually got a much harder game in front of him. He's got to be careful. And he's got a little bit of protection, of course, with the status resist. The guy is down. She's trying to get the Lincolns off next. Uh -oh. But in the midst, they're going to toss back into the arrow, into the Hex. They're locking down. Nisha's gone. Oh, boy. They Instant have smoke. the power to deal with him right now. They're feeling themselves. Instant smoke. The roar is still available. They want more. 70 seconds. He just spent the gold. I mean, you know, Secret, they definitely are going to be feeling it after the outcome of that last fight. They know that Tundra's got this lead against them. And there's got to be sort of that really concerning feeling just sort of deep in their gut. When you get behind Tundra, you struggle immensely to get a hold back at the game. It's something that teams throughout the entire TI have struggled to do. Trying to turn around against the lead at this point, against this squad. Only very few have even come close to being able to do so. Secret, they've got to do something miraculous to hold on to this game. It's a huge death, too. Such a long time. The Ember Spirit off the map. You can see Secret's kind of stuck in their base. Crystalis is really being, I mean, pretty, pretty uh, aggressive being down here. He can even get caught pretty easily if there's just like a Hawk scouting him. So he's really pushing the limit of his hero down here. And Roche, it's going to get scouted instantly. It's going to spawn, and they'll have a small window to actually go for it. Don't have secrets who are going to want to do anything about this whilst they don't have Nisha. It's going to die so fast yeah, as well. It really will. With, the, with nine. Have hit all that minus armor. My eyes the secret note. Out of all the heroes, Atmosphere may be one of the ones that could have gone for some sort of aggressive dive in to try and look for a steal. It the rest of four of them, it's so, so hard to do. Of course, Outpost under Tundra's control, so no real easy way for Nisha to get over here in time. Roshan gets taken ages into the hands of Skeeter and Secret. They may have come too close to the pit already. The jump on the puppy, they dropped the E on this. No, it was rolling thunder. Locking Puppy down across the stairs, Puppy falls, and Science, he's got to run. Oh, he'll miss there, protecting from that first instance of the Scardi attack. And Science, he's still got no chance of running. Oh, and Rezo, he's out of close, Rezo gets the top spurt. Oh, 
They take the rose. They take the ages. They take three more kills from Secret. It's the way that, I mean, they're fighting the rose, right? They're killing it. They're like, oh, we got this. So they moonlight shadow front out and go for catch while they're doing the rose shot time. Time to just on another level every single time, the way they take every single approach, every single fight. Yeah, Secret starting to crumble a little bit once more. They've got to pull themselves together. But how now? Skitter, he's, now he's the one full critical mass. The Mjolnir is done, he's got Shard. I mean, at the least, a Crystalis on the Naga Siren, he can continue to do this. Keep some of these lanes, split push out, cut the creep waves, limit the areas that Tundra's able to push in on, but already this top lane, it's hitting the tier threes. Tundra, they're gonna look to try and push on a high ground here. And the big issue really for Crystalis is when is, he, when is he gonna be able to feel strong enough to get into a fight himself? And do what Nisha's doing, he's one, three, and two on this Naga. He's trying to get the axe here to yeah. sort of have that extra setup, but... Is it gonna give him damage to actually walk into these fights? It doesn't feel like it, Tundra. They've. They've covered all their bases. And they're so strong now around this push. Three minutes still on the Aegis. So much time to play with. Where they can look to take so much from Secret. Gaia's top damage has been destroyed. Rex, it's just dropping for free. Nobody wants to step up. And here's getting the tossed. He's got the eggs. Taxa! He's in with the combo. They catch the eyes out of the side. The arrow connects as well. Swashbuckle won't quite clip him. Neither will the axes, but nine. Over towards Chrysalis now, the Global Silence holding back Tundra's aggression for now. But they're not able to make anything of that Global. Secret, gotta keep that distance throughout the remainder of the Shrolly Thunder for nine. 30 seconds without their Zayas Marcy. Now they're toss. That's Axa. The set up down to Chrysalis, they get the roar, they're the full of Axe as well, he's been locked down. They've gotta get Chrysalis back to safety. He's walking back to the fountain. They'll be able to allow Crystalis to reset, but the damage is done. The rags have been taken out. Rezo, he tries to come in, but he gets too close. Rules up. Rezo's out for 70. No buyback for the last track. They can't kill anybody they during can't. the global. They're just on full retreat. Secret. Starting to look impossible. It just, it just doesn't stop it from Tundra. Once they've got a hold on the, the game, it's just this immensely tight grip. You cannot stop them. 12K lead. All it takes is one fight, really, from Tundra. We saw 28 minutes, right? Things yep. were kind of even, and then kaboom. They find absolutely everything they needed. And now Secret, they're pretty trapped. They've got the Lincolns now for Anish, uh, but as we said, where's the damage going to be coming from? Everyone on Tundra's feeling a bit too tanky with all these new items coming out. And just, you know, as, as always, you've got to really point back to sort of how impressive it is for Tundra. They do with this last big Medusa, something yep. that no one else was doing. Something that was, by the sounds of it from Al, he sort of picked on a bit of a whim. Skeeter, he got the new Crimson Witness for it. He wanted to play it. It's looking pretty darn fantastic. It's it's up there at the top. And they see Nisha. And they get that opening. They got the chain The stun. global's going to be pulled. Can he get him out in time? They can't. The lockdown's there. He spent his gold on the Lincolns. Oh, he's out for 80 and Zayat. Also found. Secret, they are crumbling, falling apart once again in this game three. Tundra, they just know how to break you. And they just know how to play with this vision, right? The Hawk this time around, it always seems to be scouting. has fallen. I believe they also now, that was the gem that they had just picked up, gave to Nisha, and he didn't last with it for very long. Now it's on the Beastmaster. A full refresher, also, this Beastmaster, 33, a menace this game, 12, 1, and 16. My goodness. I mean, there's so much pressure on it's Crystalis thinking. right now to just try and keep this game going. Resolution as well, they're, they're doing everything in their power here. Secret to just cut these waves, push them back out. Good, good call there with the BKB CP out. If that BKB didn't come, Resolution was dead for sure. He gets himself back to base. Secret, they're trying the best to prolong the game. By time for Nisha to get back in, and that will certainly be the case. He'll be back up in 30. Secret, at the least, despite this incredible lead that starting to grow against them, they were able to hold them off, give themselves another chance. But each and every time, that chance becomes slimmer and slimmer. I mean, the rapier is queued up for Nisha. He's really starting to feel it. And, I mean, Chrysalis, he's got the Bloodthorn queued up. Perhaps this could be some solution to be able to focus fire some targets, but... And he's got Tundra, a lot of money towards it. He does. Tundra just, they, they're, they're just playing so well off each other, protecting each other with Lotus Orbs, four stabs, etc. They have so many, nine snaking both with those Lotus Orbs. So even if someone does get focus fired either from a net or from that Bloodthorn, they'll have ways to bail them out. I've seen them do time and time again. And now their base, right? The base is just being shoved in constantly. Tundra always going to be able to shove those lanes in. So much damage. Nine with the blood on the aggressive, you know, the offensive items, the defensive items, the Lotus ready to bail Skeeter out of any dangerous spots. 
They have everything to just sort of empower this Medusa, allow Skeeter to just enter the front of the fight. And it will be so, so tough for Secret to take Skeeter down at this stage. And they're even starting to get, you know, these tier four neutral items. So Global starts to get addressed as well. All these dispels. Tundra continue to stay as a unit. Secret continue to be trapped. Puppy. Just gonna try and come out, maybe get a bit of vision, a bit of information. It'll to take the outpost Whoa. back, or at least tease with the Seven idea. The risky. Still on the cover of the smoke. Oh, oh. do they see it? Someone pings. I mean, they they want the bigger target. They've got themselves on top of Nisha. Uh-oh, he jumps left. They're pinging it. I mean, his, his TP's on cooldown. That was put to a stop there by the jumper Saxon, so he has to make his way back to the base it's with a, a few remnants, but... Of course, he's still got many to play with with that Aghanim, so he'll be fine. Secret able to get everyone back to the base, but indeed, Global's down. Maybe a bit of an opportunity for Tundra to once again try and take this game to the next step. Look to push down for another set of barracks. We'll see how much they want to force it. I think they're I think they're kind of on chill mode until Skeeter hits 25. If someone walks into them, they can look for the fight, but Skeeter, it unlocks a whole new potential of the hero when you hit 25 on this Dusa, especially versus this Naga. I mean, it's true, true, and sort of the big thing that's standing out as well is just sort of the levels, you know, Tundra, they have able to get so much XP from the map with these kills. Skeeter just about to hit level 25. Yep. Meanwhile, for Chrysalis, of course, all of his farms pretty much done by the illusions, split pushing out the map, still stuck on level 19. Still a ways to go before he's really going to be feeling in a position to be able to stand his ground against the cause of Tundra in the team fight. And a ways to go, really, Zayats, you know, he was getting close to BKB, what, 12 minutes ago or something? He still doesn't even have it done, so... The scaling for them has completely stagnated. While for Tundra, it feels like all of them are scaling more and more with these small little items to protect each other. Not really sort of any easy target that, even with the BKB on Zyats, that he can sort of just commit in on with the Unleash. No. They've got ways to kite him out. Zax has got the items, blinks, forces, yules. And multiple ways to get that dispel, as we see. Witch Bane's done, or Witch Bane's picked up from the Medusa, and they did, I believe, have the Stormcraft on the Tiny, so yeah, ways to just reset away constantly, which has been kind of the bread and butter for Tundra. Resetting, retaking fights over and over again. And 25 now. Medusa, Skeeter, he's got the talent. So they're ready for their fights if anything comes to them. Playing it safe, probably, though. Final game, perhaps, for them. Playing around this Roshan timer, it's I mean, soon to spawn. Uh, that, that, that's it, exactly. They can taste that victory. Yep. They know how close they are to claiming that Aegis of Champions every single time. We see Tundra take the safest route out. They do not let these leads slip, slip away, and they're going to do everything to make sure that nothing changes from that in this all-important game three. It's got to be frustrating for Secret at this point, knowing that they can't make any move outside, but at the well, same time, hunts. also, if they give up the Roshan, they probably just know that there's no way for them to bring down this Medusa twice. So the big item pickups that they are going to require is Chrysalis. And he's next item done. It's going to be opting for the another fire after okay. Bloodthorn. So some further aggressive sort of setup that they can play with. Still just committing into these fights at this point. It just has so much to deal with him. Went out with a smoke. And he's trying to get in there with the jump on a 33. See the take down the big speed spot. We're the raw up there and on top of the 33. He's having the BKB off those down. The they charge Skeeter. It's oh, too oh, much oh. damage from the Medusa. Nisha jumps in. We'll be able to finish off 33. Turn, and we'll see the buyback coming straight away from Resolution 9. He's got a pretty deep hit to try and chase down Puppy. So with a bit of time there for the Rolling Thunder over towards Resolution. Resolution did buy back for this. He's able to sidestep the Iron Tide. Nine out with the Swashbuckle. Secret, they'll look to chase, but the place there to. before the Slide Fist connects. He's out to safety nine. Yeah, I want to get back in. Saxa in with the toss. Go on the side. This is wrong. The lockdown. Nisha, oh Nisha. Out for 100. As Tundra, they'll chase him down. Rezo. It's only Puppy and Chrysalis, Puppy, and the, arrow. the arrow's there, Tundra catch him out. They're ready to run down mid, there's a lack of buybacks on Secret. Secret felt the need, they had to chase to try to get more of the Beastmasters dead, but they get hit. There's no buyback, no buyback on Resolution, that Nisha, he's 200 gold short. Ooh. It's Tundra. They're gonna try to get some wrap They're gonna to Tundra. Some sort of surprise, but it's two against four. As this push is not stopping. Dyer's Tier four is dropping. Well, They've got secret. a fortification, but still it's such a long time without resolution, without Nisha, a full minute. And the creeps are coming in top. They can't even cut the waves. As the tier fours. Tundra, they're pushing on. Secret, they've got to make their move now. It's gonna be now or never. If they want to try and stop Tundra. 
They gotta just run in. And they gotta do something. The H is exposed. Dundra, they're looking to end inside. Jumps in, but immediately to his death. Crystalis has got the illusions out, but he's surrounded. Taken out. The Ancient is exposed. They're looking for the game. Tundra, they're on the Ancient. There'll be a buyback for Crystalis, but surely there's nothing. He's just getting controlled. Nothing to be done here from Secret as Tundra. They're closing it up. The Ancient it falls. It's on. Oh my god. Tundra have done it. The 3 0 clean sweep today against Team Secret here in the grand final. What an unbelievable story. An undefeated Tundra. Unbelievable. And the way they did it, it truly feels like.